Welcome to Westport, Indiana. Central Indiana. We're a little south of Indianapolis, where it's it's just a weird look out here yeah. right now. Yeah. It's that that kind of twilighty, out of focusy, sort of soft look mm -hmm. to the light. Yeah. It, it just in the past 10 to 15 minutes, it's gotten much dimmer out here. We are, I would say, probably what 98, 99 percent totality at this point. Yeah. Just we're getting really close. It's gotten a little in. cooler. Yeah. A little bit of a breeze has kicked in, mm -hmm. but and, and I've heard from my daughter and stuff that the uh, the clouds are a little nasty in, in yeah. Lexington. Here we've got some high thin clouds, and that's a cool breeze that just hit us just it now. It did. It did. I mean, it really did. Yeah. And I see a couple of small airplanes that are flying around, helping to catch this shadow of totality as it comes across. Now, I actually had a chance to talk with a, a professor of physics and astronomy over at UK last week about what makes totality so special, such an important event. He's been traveling to catch him his mm -hmm. whole life, and uh, we wanted to show that story before we get to a totality. So let's hear from him really quick. In the days before an eclipse, there might not be anybody more excited than an astronomy professor. A total solar eclipse is, is the most spectacular, predictable event in nature. It's an experience which almost defies words, almost defies description. You almost have to have to be there. Tom Trolland has taught physics and astronomy at the University of Kentucky for about 40 years. He's been pursuing eclipses for even longer. I've been chasing eclipses for almost my whole life. Not always successfully. But the first time I was successful, uh, I was uh, a senior in college. Even though I had known for years what I should see, to actually see it was the, was the experience of a lifetime. He's now seen three and hoping for a fourth on Monday. He said most professors in the department are trying to get into the path of totality. The difference between a total eclipse and a partial eclipse is almost literally the difference between night and day. Now we can do a little experiment while we're here at UK. Right now my head is eclipsing the sun. Let's reveal it. That's what it looks like typically. Now on April 8th, Lexington will have 97% totality, right about there or so. Just a little bit of the sun still showing. Here in Alumni Commons, there will be a, an eclipse viewing party. They'll be giving out eclipse glasses, and there will be a pretty cool view. But if you're able to make it into that zone of totality, that view is going to be absolutely breathtaking. Whether you're in that partial eclipse territory or in that sliver of totality, Trollin says the most important thing is to be present. Take it in. Drink it in. Don't spend time fiddling with cameras or equipment because other people will be taking pictures of the eclipse. So if you want a souvenir picture of the eclipse, let other people do the work. I recommend you simply take in the experience. Look up, gaze at the sun, look at that corona with its little tendrils uh, pointing out in different directions away from the sun. In Lexington, Sean Moody, LEX 18 News. Remember, you can't look at the sun directly in Lexington, even with the cloud cover. Don't look up at it right now. You need to have special solar eclipse classes, which we still need here in Westport for about another minute or two. We are down, Sean, just to the thinnest sliver yeah. of sun left here before totality. It's just a little curved line in the sky right now. You see the two sort of ends of the line that are just starting to starting to shrink into each other. There's a guy who uh, is across the street. You'll hear from him on LAX 18 News a little bit later on tonight, who has a really impressive telescope set up. And we went over there earlier and watched as that moon just started creeping into the sun, and it was so impressive to see. Now we are just in the thinnest of crescents right now. Bill, as a, as a meteorologist, somebody who studies the sky, what's it like watching this unfold? Right now, this is nothing short of surreal. Yeah. You know, knowing that we've got you know three celestial bodies lining up absolutely perfectly. Eclipses technically happen every month; they mm -hmm. just don't hit the Earth. Uh, the moon does not stay on a perfect ecliptic. And as it wobbles both north and south, the shadows end up being both north and south of the Earth, so it misses. Mm -hmm. But on these very special days, when we get the opportunity to see everything in the universe line up perfectly, I mean, this is yeah. truly, truly amazing. And we are, we are so close now yeah. here, Sean. And the, the, the really fascinating coincidence that the professor was talking about was that the sun is 400 times larger than the moon, and it's also 400 times further away from us than the moon is. And so those two sizes to our eye are nearly exactly the same, which is what makes this possible. And it leaves that corona visible. And what makes this uh, eclipse even better than the one seven years ago mm -hmm. is that the moon is closer to us. Mm -hmm. And so it's larger. Mm -hmm. And so that's why the, the shadow is so much wider and we get so much more totality uh, during this eclipse. Right now the moon is about 230,000 miles away. It averages about 248. So uh, we are at a good point for this eclipse to happen. We're down again to just a couple of percentages oh, here left before we hit the, uh, the corona. 
And when that happens, we are going to be seeing uh, all kinds of just amazing things. It'll be like a night sky for us here in central Indiana, hoping to see planets. Uh, we should be able to see those pretty easily in the next, you know, looks like maybe 30 seconds, the way things are going, Sean. And we'll be quiet for a, a few seconds just to let this sink in. For everyone around, we're in someone's backyard right now, and so we certainly want to be cognizant dark. of them. And, oh, my gosh, and we're just going to react. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Look how uh, dim. Well, I'm not looking at the sun right now. Yeah, it's take off sun, Sean. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. It's so dim right now. Delana, our producer, just said 30, which means we're getting right into totality in just a few more seconds. 306 is when it's supposed yeah. to hit here. I can hear several light airplanes overhead. The view they're getting right now just yeah. must be fascinating. If, if we take our glasses off and just look around, not at the sun, it's amazing it is how the dark weirdest it is light. right now. It's so unusual. It's so odd. Instagram has no filter for yeah. this. <laughs> oh, it's, it's getting so thin up there right now. And, oh, we're seconds away. Let's just experience this. All right, we're hitting total or this list. We're going to get in Here Lexington. We are down to just a little nub. Wow, it's so dark. Oh my gosh. Oh wow. We're at the corner. Uh, that should be the ring. My gosh, it's getting dark. Oh wow. All right. I see, I see stars, I see blinds, I see the ring. You can see the outline, see there's the Venus. Oh my oh god. Oh my goodness. There. Wow. We have totality. Wow. Totality in Westport, Indiana right now. This is unreal. We've got oh Venus to the bottom goodness. right. Wow. <laughs> and you can see the corona. You can see all the, the, the um, <laughs> I can't talk right now. You can see all the, the, there's a flare. Yeah. My gosh, there's a prominence Down on the, the bottom, bottom lower the corner of the sun. Oh my gosh. And you see how it's shooting out in all directions. You see yeah. how it's. There's it's a loop. That, yeah. Oh my, oh my goodness. goodness. There's a loop there. Oh. Holy. The stars, the planets. Oh my gosh, this is incredible. Where's Jupiter? Amazing. I'm trying to see if the comet's visible. Yeah. So, uh,. So if we look uh, directly down to the right, Bill, that is Neptune, is that correct? No, it's not Neptune, that's Venus. That's Venus, down and to the right. So then to the left, is this Jupiter okay. over to the left? Jupiter is to the left, okay. Venus is to the right. Okay. So we should be seeing Can't really see the comet with the high, high clouds, cloud, but again, yeah. but I don't know if that's a prominence sun. or a flare at the bottom of the sun. You know, the moon has those mountains and craters, and so little pieces of the sun can shine through those little irregularities around the moon's surface. Yeah. I'm, I'm wondering if that's a part of the corona or if that's a cloud issue, right. with that loop to the bottom left. I see it, yeah. That's amazing. And there's that little speck of bright light. Yeah, that's the prominence I was talking about. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Prominence or a flare? Wow. I'm not sure what, I mean, yeah. We have to ask your, uh, the astronomy guy across the street. Right, we'll go back to him. Exactly oh what that is. Oh my goodness. Now, I understand that we're seeing Wonderful. Lexington. There's a bat that just flew over us. Um, I understand that we are showing you a shot from Lexington right now. I know it's a bit cloudy down there, and, and hopefully everyone has, has been able to enjoy yeah. this live coverage of the totality here in Indiana. That's oh, terrific. We're getting breaks just in the nick of time the there for some of you oh, in Lexington. Goodness. Clay, I know, uh, just tell me the time because I'm actually looking at the sun right now and I want to take the binoculars away before, if you can just let me know, we get to lot 308. 308 thank you. 308.50. Okay, thank now. you. What's, uh, what is the exact end of totality? It's coming up in shortly. Okay. Uh, I don't know the exact, well, it's just so but we're coming up. That is incredible. It's, I mean, the twilight around you, you can look around yeah. all of it that street lights have come degree. on yeah oh my goodness that is phenomenal yeah i'm I, i'm curious if that's a solar prominence that loop to the bottom left there's another there's a second bright area coming up on the bottom mm -hmm. i hope that you guys at home are able to enjoy this to a degree yeah. But again, if, if you're in the totality area, it's amazing. All the coincidences that have to line up to create this, yeah. amazing. All right, we've got to be coming out here shortly. There's a contrail just coming up on it now. 
Uh, yep, I can, there's the sun. It's getting brighter. Yep, Here there it we comes. go. Glasses on. Here it comes. There's the ring. There it is. <laughs> wow, they did the math right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. All right. Wow. Amazing. That's the end of totality here in Westport, Indiana. Uh, and and the, the nice thing is we still have another hour of show because the moon still has to finish transiting the sun so we can enjoy this partial eclipse stuff for at least another hour. So. <laughs> adjust the cameras back to us again. Yeah. Yeah, this is just again now just a slowly increasing light it's again it, the light just doesn't look right no 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 it, it, it's like completely it, it's as if you're you know when we're kids playing basketball under a floodlight yeah. in the dark is what it feels like yeah i'm wondering if we're getting all the uh, the colors of the spectrum mm -hmm. since yeah. we're not getting the full disc of the sun like that yeah the colors do look odd absolutely it, yeah. it looks blue it looks much bluer than it typically would be yeah um such such There's the bottom sliver down. Going. Wow. Hey, Andrew, you wanted to say hi to some folks in Morrill? Yeah. Now, we, to, to preface this real quick, uh, the folks who invited us in their backyard and have been just absolutely wonderful hosts, um, they have family down in central Kentucky. So you have to kind of lean in here, Andrew. Yeah. Uh, but say hey to the folks you wanted to say hey to. Yeah, uh, to my first cousin, Roger Van Winkle, and his wife, Lisa, and to uh, Jan. Uh, yeah, this is a small price to pay for, yeah. for what you've been able to provide yeah, us here today. Okay, Thank it's you. It's amazing, and I, I wish everybody could have been here to watch it. They're down there in Morrill, right? In Morrill. All right. Yeah, and it's been amazing. You know, we, we, we wanted to, to make sure that we weren't talking about these things before the totality started. We wanted to get through to it, but now that we're out of totality, let's just talk about what an incredible uh, experience this afternoon has been. This family has had us in their backyard. Yeah. We've had a cookout. We've had Keeneland bread pudding. Which, We've had everything you need for an eclipse party. Yeah, and this may have been the best eclipse party around. I, yeah. I think it was. <laughs> and you've got the astronomer across the street. Mm -hmm. I mean, we come to a small town in central Indiana where is some of our folks say Hoosier hospitality. Mm -hmm. But again, just the stories that we're yeah. finding here. Yeah. Um, you know, the Berea connections, mm -hmm. central of Kentucky. Uh, the, the astronomer just across the street who's an award-winning yeah. teacher. Um, so again, just wonderful folks here in uh, Westport, Indiana. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you all have been able to share this with us today because, yeah. again, as I said before, the, the experience, it's surreal. Yeah, it is. And to see, I'm, and I'm guessing those were prominences on mm -hmm. the bottom, those bright orange. Yeah. Uh, you know, just incredible. And again, I don't know if it was an atmospheric phenomenon with our cirrus clouds right. here, or if that was something with the corona, that uh -huh. loop that was at you know, about a seven o'clock position. Right, right. Yeah, it was it was amazing. It, and it was such a, such a, it, it, you know, tiny little spot at the bottom of the moon, yeah. that just bright, bright orange, so yeah. much brighter than everything else around And there was a corona. second one just before, yeah. Yeah. just before the totality left. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that, that ring, you know, you, you hear people talk about the ring just before and just after as the sun just starts to peak out and you see the, the corona of the outline and then just as that flash comes on the end, of course, that's your signal, glasses back on. <laughs> and I, I must admit, I cheated slightly yeah, yeah. Um, with, the, with the timing and just before totality, mm -hmm. I, I did look up without the glasses yeah. and you can see the outline of the moon Amazing. just before it, mm -hmm. it encroached all the yeah. way. And uh, and I tell you what, you know, we, we've we've talked about the different lights, and I'm starting to feel a breeze again yeah. right now too. And we'll warm it right back yeah. up. And, and talk about Bill, you know, that the, we've got variations in temperature on the Earth's surface, right, which change relative to the sun. Yeah. So as that sunlight is changing so quickly, that's where that breeze comes from, well, right? Yeah, you you're changing the pressure and changing mm -hmm. the temperature, but what you've also done is you basically are you've created a mini front mm -hmm. that's <laughs> been working its way across. It's it's a dusk front, for yeah. lack of a better way to put it. And for the same reason, you feel a little breeze come up sometimes in the evening. Mm -hmm. Same thing was just happening here for us. Yeah, yeah, it's it's incredible. And then because that shadow is circular all around us, that means that you know when you see an amazing sunrise or an amazing sunset, we have that in 360 degrees. It's we, the coolest thing. We had a drone up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had a drone up here earlier uh, during the totality. It's going to be interesting to see if they were going to be able to see the the outline right. of the shadow as it was coming in. So we weren't ro broadcasting it live, mm -hmm. but uh, we're going to take a look at the, uh, the the recording on it yeah, to we, see what we'll, it looks like. We'll bring that to you throughout the day. And that shadow, I mean, you think about how quick that shadow is moving across the surface of the Earth. I think it's something like 1,700 miles per hour as you're waiting for it. So if you get up high enough, you know, it's, you can see it coming from far enough away. It'll be like a wave coming in. Yeah. yeah. And now that that shadow is somewhere in New York. Right. So it, <laughs> it moves so fast. It got out of here in a hurry. Mm -hmm. It's been an amazing afternoon out here. Yeah. Yeah. And the the spectacle is one that we won't see again 
for another few decades. Mm -hmm. We're glad, so glad, you were able to uh, to enjoy it with us, mm -hmm. to experience it with us. You know, this is both of our second mm -hmm. go round. Yeah, yeah, it's it's such an amazing thing, and I, I can't imagine. I could see this 20 times, and it would be just as jaw-dropping every time. And the next go-around, I think, is a partial lunar eclipse that, that won't be quite as dramatic. Yeah, we, we're getting a little bit spoiled here in Kentucky. We've had the yeah. Western Kentucky one uh, just seven years ago, now this one, so we, we can't complain. Okay, we're going to have complete reports, obviously, coming up. I don't know if NBC still has coverage ongoing or not, but we will have reports coming up at 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 5.30, 6 and 7, uh, as we wrap up history from uh, central Indiana here. For Sean Moody, I'm Bill Mech. Thank you so much for enjoying this total eclipse of the sun with us. With apologies to Bonnie Tyler on that. And again, have a wonderful rest of your day.